So whenever we want to get a motion over into Unity, um, the uh, the character is going to be a third person game. So typically, I like to to actually look at a motion uh, the way that I'll probably see it in my viewport, which is something like this. Let me turn my loop on down here, and then we can hit play. Okay, so now we're starting to get an idea for what it might look like inside the game as kind of an exerted idle motion, which is great for me. I like this. So what I want to do now is I want to get the character and I want to get my first motion over so I can just start getting some stuff in my game. So in order to do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, I'm going to select my character and I'm going to open up my timeline so I want you to be able to see where he is. This is my scene tree view, and so I can see everything that's parented to um, the, uh, the character here. And then what I want to do is go down to my timeline, and then you'll see this is our puppet clip. This is the motion that we recorded right here. And I can drag this. I can scrub that and see the motion. Uh, we can play it from here and uh, take a look at a preview for what it's going to kind of look like. And again, like I said, we're going to actually make this loopable inside Unity. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll use this collect clip section in order to get my motion. But first, what I want to do is I want to go over to my modify panel with my character selected. And then I'm going to scroll down. Um, if you ever wanted to go back and edit your character, you could always go straight back and edit via character creator this way. But what I want to do is move to the next step, which is getting my character in my game. So I want to edit in 3D Exchange. So what I want to do now is just with the character selected, I'll worry about my motion in a minute. I'm going to hit edit in 3D Exchange. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to make the character available to receive the motions that I'm making. So I'm just going to preload it over in 3D Exchange. It's going to be sitting there waiting for me to send motions over to it. Uh, 3D Exchange is going to be where we author our FBX content. So this is where we're going to put together our motions with our characters and get them ready to go into the game engine. So this is 3D Exchange, and now we're going to have our character load up in there. You'll see the hierarchy of the character appears here. Our character preview is here, and we'll come back to this in just a moment. So back over in iClone, what we want to do is we want to set this motion up so that it can be exported and used inside our game engine. So we have this collect clip track, and what's going to happen here is everything that's on the timeline that we want to collect and send over to uh, our FBX file is going to be inside this blue area. So we just want to define the region that we want to collect. And this includes any facial animation we've done, lip sync, uh, any of the puppeteering, any motion keyframes that we've created, anything like that. But the Motion Puppet is a really great tool to use. Of course, you could use mocap and so on, but this tool is fast for getting some motion together. The Collect Clip then, once we have it selected, we right click and then we select Add Motion to 3D Exchange. Now, there are some other examples there, and one of them is Add Motion Plus. And that means if you had facial animation, you would use it. In this instance, we've added the motion to 3D Exchange. And the motion is all we needed, and so we have that here. You'll see the character performing that there on the screen in the viewport and looping. I'm going to go ahead and stop that, and I'm going to scroll down. I'll maximize 3D Exchange here so you can see it a bit better. And we will scroll down on the right hand side and you'll see that I've got under animation motion zero and I need to add that to my perform and so there it is and I'm just gonna call this idle and underscore weak so we've got that there and then once we have that set up we're really ready to go ahead and export this now 3D Exchange does some special things for FBX export. I'll go ahead and open up the export uh, window here. And we have, for our file name, we'll go ahead and just uh, put here Castaway for now. And then we have our settings. And FBX can be fickle depending on what engine you're going to. And for iClone, we have set up predefined optimized FBX output for these engines. So 3D uh, Max, you have the Unity Unreal, which is what we're talking about, uh, Unity 3D, Unreal as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, Stingray output is supported uh, just as of recent, as well as uh, Motion Builder output and Maya. So really, basically, 
basically anywhere you want your FBX to go. If there's not a uh, an engine listed here or uh, a software listed here, uh, chances are it's still going to be okay. And so FBX output though is optimized for these things. And so it automatically sets things up like your axis and your units and knows what engines use what. So this is a handy tool. You don't really have to go look all this stuff up or remember it. it, it automatically sets it up for you. So we also do things with the character creator to help you save on uh, face count and poly. And that is removing any hidden mesh and then also removing any uh, of the uh, ex extra opacities and and uh, un unnecessary materials getting everything assigned where it should go. So just a little cruise through the export FBX and then that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we can tell it where we want it to go and then we actually want to export that. And so I will, I'm going to actually add a little bit here. So I'm gonna make this 002 and then we'll say okay. And so um, this is gonna export the FBX. It's gonna set up all the materials, any motion that was uh, added to that. You of course uh, would be able to export uh, if you've made that option. And let's make sure we make that clear because that is going to be, we're going to resave this so we can point that out because it's really important to make sure that you get the animation included. So let's click over here once we do our Unity 3D and then we want to make sure we include animation. So always good to double check that. And then you can decide what uh, the frame rate is and then how you want it saved. If you want, uh, if you have over here in your perform editor multiple motions, then you're going to uh, be able to say you want one animation file per motion, or you can save everything in one and Unity is gonna parse it one way or the other. So just, just a, uh, FYI on that. So we'll go ahead and uh, select this to save one per and then we'll select okay. So now we're exporting everything again and that's going to give us our character, that's going to give us our animation, that's going to give us everything and the iClone animation through our motion puppet that we did all the way down to our iClone animation pipeline um, is complete with 3D Exchange. We have the FBX output ready to go, and now we'll set that up inside Unity.